Good morning from Epcot. It's a beautiful day. It's a special day. Can you see it already? Because I can. Some walls have come down. Big day. Let's go explore. Honestly, I am so excited right now. Holy smokes. What a difference. So we have the Walt statue. There's a massive line to take a picture with him right now. We're not worried about that. It's the first day, so there'll be plenty of time for us to enjoy that. But I do want to look around this area because that's what I'm really excited about. We do have a lot of rust. Not sure what the deal is with that. The whole theme is like, it's rusty. Just down from the Walt statue is this area right over here. And it looks like we have Daisy meeting. You can't see, she's behind this column. But we have these big columns kind of offering some shade in this area. And then this, I can't wait to see what this looks like after dark. I'm really excited to come back in the evening and check it out. Oh, and those lights over there. Remember we saw those the other day. They were kind of glowing and pulsing. That was really cool. This view that we get of Spaceship Earth is absolutely gorgeous. I love it. And then, of course, there's just so much space. You can't really tell. We'll walk through, but there's a lot of seating, and there's Russell, and there's a lot of different places to just chill back here, which I think is really cool. But again, I'm getting hung up on the rust. It looks like it wasn't finished. I don't know if that's what they were going for, but it's weird. I think I think the thing is, is it's nature-based. It's all brown. But like maybe like a brown paint just didn't look right. But this is world celebration. And I don't know. But I like it because it's neutral toned with all the greenery. So I actually like the color tone, but maybe just not the rust part of it. Mm. Outside of that, this place is absolutely beautiful. I know. Let's go take a look at the seating area. Yeah, let's go. Look at all the seating back here. And of course, we did talk about this the other night. There's lighting here as well. So it will be illuminated in the evening. Take a look at the charging stations. Check it out. You get a wireless on top, probably, and then you have plugs on the bottom. Is it actually wireless on top? Give it a shot. Yeah, maybe. Okay, no, not, not wireless on top. No, just the plugs in here. Just the plugs in the box. Very cool. But like, we, when we talk about, I feel like when we talk about like Epcot being like a prototype city of tomorrow, like this is a perfect example of it. This is actually like dead on. Like this is like the city center where you're hanging out. Like World Celebration, I get it, but like I feel like it's city center. That's what I get from it. Like grab your coffee, you're working, you're hanging out, you grab a seat, you're hanging out at lunch, you know? Beautiful. So we've made our way to another corner and it looks like this corner is different than the last. Check this out though. I wonder if these are lights. I bet they are. Bet. And we definitely have a lot of seating over here as well. Everything's kind of wet. It's first thing in the morning. I'm sure it was just freshly washed. Got some theming on the ground. I like how they went with the crushed stone like mosaic again. I wonder how it's gonna look in the evening. Like you know how this mosaic ground sometimes sparkles with the light? I wonder if it's gonna sparkle similar to what the ground used to do here. So we have some theories as to the theming of this area. We're gonna let them kind of marinate and develop in our head. But I do think that there is a method to that rust colored madness. But let's move into the next section of this. Let's make our way over here. This is another section. Now this actually, I think, mimics the shape of the Epcot logo. But check out these beautiful lights up here. I don't know if you can see, but they're iridescent. They're gorgeous. I cannot wait to be here at night. And we do have some more charging stations over here and a big table. And so, to correct me if I'm wrong, we're going to have all the new food booths and stuff like that coming out of here. So people are going to grab their food and come sit in this area and take That's it all in. That's my understanding. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. And I think that this is perfect because yeah, it cool. makes it a much better place to kind of be for the festival as opposed to whatever has been going on up until this point. We're just kind of struggling on trash cans. I think that that is going to go away. You USB charger in there. Chargers all over here, by the way. I don't know if you can see them. Then we do have some seating up here. Plenty of space to eat your food. This is so nice. They are heavy. And then more seating over here. And we do have shade as well from some of these benches that are built kind of tall. I assume that this is a wheelchair accessible section of this bench, by the way. It doesn't say, but usually that's what this is about. And then we have more charging over here. 
and nice little bit of shade. This is so nice. Now that we've taken a look over there, by the way, hi. I didn't even I didn't even properly tell you hello today, but I just I was so excited, so we just made our way in. But construction walls have been moved back to here, which is just outside of this building, which has not been completed yet. But now that we can get close, we can get a better look. And there's quite a bit to see this direction too. Now I'll tell you right now, I don't know when this building is supposed to be finished. Hopefully soon. I can't wait though. In fact, if we take a look at the building from this direction, we can really get a great look and we can really appreciate those panels that have been added that look like Epcot. I think that that's a great addition to this building. I cannot wait to see what it looks like when it's done. I can only imagine how it's gonna look when it's lit up. How do you feel about this area? I can't wait to come here and just hang out. I know. Like obviously it's really hustle and bustle right now. There's a lot of extra people here that wouldn't normally be here and it's still roomy and breathable. Like yeah. even on the opening day, like there's plenty of space. And we'll be here tomorrow again. I'd imagine that tomorrow things are gonna simmer down a little bit and it'll be more like it will be on any other day. So we'll definitely check it out again. I'm really excited for this though. Like I, this is exactly what Epcot has needed for a long time. We've talked constantly about the benches and the lack of seating and lack of place to eat. This was the missing piece. It, there's no way around it. And I think they nailed it though. Like I to, do too. I, I really think they straight up nailed it. The only problem that I have is the rust because while I can see how they're going for like an aesthetic with that, the problem is you can see already rust running, yeah. like the trail of rust. Which so, is a different color. Yes. One thing came out, if you don't know this, like it runs a brighter orange mm -hmm. than the dark brown. So I don't think that this is necessarily entirely a stylistic choice, or if it was, the follow through wasn't necessarily there, at least in my opinion. We'll see how it holds up. I can't imagine it's gonna hold up all that well, but we'll see. Yeah, I can't wait to come back tonight. I know, I'm really excited to see it tonight, but let's enjoy our day. Now, among the things that we want to do today is check for more 2024 merch, which I see already. Let's go take a look. Can you see the new 2024 Starbucks tumbler? I mean, look at it. $49.99. But there's more merch we're looking for, too. The Festival of the Holidays merchandise. Right. Cross your fingers, everyone. We'll see if we can find it. But check out, they have the um, uh, Jesse Oh, That's how cool. cute. Check those out. Now, I also see some Festival of the Holidays merch. This is misplaced, but it is here. So we'll keep an eye out for that elsewhere. But over here, or I should say back there, we've got a bag. So here it is. Now, this is... Is this a lounge fly? It is a lounge fly. And we've got like some velvet up here, crossbody strap, and it is $85. What do you think of the bag? I love the whole line. Yeah? I really do. I don't know what it is about it, but I think it's just the design, the color, the color choice and everything. Like it's, someone really thought it through. I don't know, I like it a lot. I look forward to seeing the rest of it right over here, actually. All right, let's go take a look. Which is awesome. So we've got some pins. Got this one right here. And we have a ornament pin as well. This is $19.99 and then this one is $17.99. Okay, here's that hoodie that we saw. This is lightweight, it's a pass holder hoodie. So it does say pass holder at the bottom. This is a very, very lightweight hoodie, $54.99. So for $79.99 we have this Epcot International Festival of the Holidays Spirit Jersey with all of the countries, which is pretty cool. And it's got this like, never take me off, I'm so comfortable fluff here. <laughs> what does the front look like? Oh, well, that's cute. But that's not all. We have so much more. Okay, first and foremost, we've got this corksicle, which is massive. I am loving that they're coming out with these much bigger corksicles. Like, I want it. Yeah, actually. $49.99. Yeah. That's right, because the ones you had before are smaller. Yes, by like so much. What are these, like 32 ounces? These are only 24 ounces, actually. Well, it's huge, most, though. If you've never had a corkscrew, I recommend it. They're actually really nice. They, yeah. It's the ergonomics of the cup. Yeah, see, it's it makes it easier to hold because it's like flat on the sides. Yeah. I like it. 
And here's a cookie jar for the cookie stroll. Russ was actually talking about this. Like, I could see you collecting them. Why not? Yeah. But again, though, I, I don't know what it is about this. Maybe it's just the color, the color palette that is this whole setup this year, or the design in general. I don't know. It just works. How I really much like is it? I'm gravitating towards all of it, to be honest with you. 39 dollars $39.99, no fun. Mm -mm. And you can dunk your cookie in coffee with your Festival of the Holiday mug. That's an eggnog cup. That is an eggnog cup. Look at it. This one is $19.99. It's nice and heavy, too. It's got speckles on the inside. But, like, compared to... Okay, so, like, we've seen some Disney mugs pretty cheap. They're really thin. They're lightweight. They can't, can't handle anything. You put anything hot in them, you're going to burn your hand through the cup. The cup's on point. The... The cookie jar is on point. And of course, those forks are. It's good stuff. You know, some of it's good stuff. But some, that hoodie is rough. Yeah, we I'm haven't quite surprised. talked about the hoodie yet, but we will here in a second. First, let's see if there's anything else that catches our eye, particularly stuff for the new year. So we just came out of Creation Shop and look, more benches. Oh my goodness. What more could a girl ask for? You guys know that I love my benches. I love that there are places to sit, and here they are. No back on these benches though, which is, I'll say it, disappointing, but they're still here and that's something. Of course, this whole area is open as well. You have concrete ones built into the seating. Yeah, we have concrete benches too. That's nice. Now there's so much more detail in the center area to see. You have to look down, because check this out. We do have some beautiful pavers here including these that look like Spaceship Earth, and Spaceship Earth is right there behind it. Fantastic. Now, before we get too ahead of ourselves, I do want to talk briefly about that hoodie, because Russ mentioned something about it, and uh, we need to have a brief conversation, make sure that you're in the know. So the Festival of the Holidays hoodie for pass holders is definitely not what I would describe as great quality. Very thin, so thin, in fact, that when the design was printed on it, it seems like it's like sticking together both sides of the fabric. And to me, in my opinion, that's an indicator of low quality. Sorry, I have a rogue hair like this is the first time. And for the price, I definitely don't feel like it's there. It feels like Walmart quality despite the like $60 price tag. Not a fan of that. I do want to make sure that I mention it though because I think it's really important that you take a look at the merch before you go all in on buying it. Now me, I think that this is going to show up at the outlets because I don't think that pass holders are going to spend the money on this. You do need to be a pass holder in order to buy it. So we'll see if it does show up at the outlets here in the new year, but I wouldn't buy that. The quality is just not there and the price point is too high. You can get much better stuff here at Walt Disney World for a similar or even lower price point, but that's just me. So that's... I didn't even realize that's a pass holder hood. And on top of that, it's 60 bucks? Yeah. No. No way, right? No way. I'm sorry. That's that's horrible quality. That should be, I mean. <laughs> 30. Not even, I'm sorry. That That's that's not, like you said, I think you said like Walmart quality. Yeah. Like I think it's even less. You know, something that you mentioned while we were in there, mm. and I feel like it might be true, is it almost seems like Disney knows it's not gonna sell anyway because pass holder merch does struggle to sell. And so instead of making a quality product that will sell, it's almost like they're making a low quality product so that if it does sell, they make something, but they know it's not gonna sell, so why waste the money? Well, could it also be an argument for they make less quality merchandise, and if it doesn't sell, then it gives them a reason to get rid of it altogether? Absolutely. That's you know something I mean? we see here at Walt Disney World all the time, and other businesses do that too. Yeah. You can't justify getting rid of it because people do buy it. So you have to do this thing where you prove that there's no demand, and you do that by lowering the quality or not giving it the attention it deserves. The Muppets area of Hollywood Studios is another fantastic example of that. No one's ever back here. We need to do something with it. Well, no one's ever back there because the whole thing is closed, you know? So that's part of the, yeah, and the I problem. It's, it's a whole method of trying to figure out what you're gonna produce in the future. And I think that this is like the last leg for festival pass holder only merch. Russ just made a really good point. He said, why don't they have a figment Nuimo? And I'm like, yeah, why? Why not? I would definitely buy that and carry it around with me. Take pictures with it everywhere. 
You know, why not? Hello, on your tour, you'll see how the five human senses can help capture your imagination. Oh, oh, can I go too? Absolutely not. You've got it wrong, Doc. It's not about listening with your ears. It's about listening with your imagination. <laughs> now I've completely lost my train of thought. No, you haven't. It's over here. All aboard. And so, as you can plainly see, imagination works the best when it's set free. Imagination is a blast! We're here. I wonder if we're going to be able to find the figment keychain that we were looking for last time we were here. Fingers crossed, but I'm not holding my breath. I feel like it was a piece of merchandise, just like so many other pieces of merchandise, that was here and then it was gone. But it isn't even popping up online from resellers, so I don't know, like, where did it go? You know? Just when we thought that it didn't exist, we found it. What, $14.99? Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's two in a row. You know, you had a little while when it was like you had no idea what you were talking about, and yet, here we are. You're back. I'm back on track, Back people. in action, baby. Well, here we are, making our way around World Showcase. Of course, quick look at the barge situation. They are there and ready for tonight's showing of Luminous. Now, the barges are supposed to be coming in and out. Will that actually happen again? I don't know. I anticipate that they're out here today because they want to make sure that tonight's showing of Luminous goes off with no problem. So rather than risk it, they're they're ready to go, you know? But we'll see how things go moving forward. Either way, it's still not the harmonious barges, which is a plus, but I would love to not have the barges there. And again, I did see more information about this from the Imagineers themselves, and they're not supposed to be here regularly. They will be coming in and out. We've made our way to one of my favorite corners here at Epcot, the Japan Pavilion. Of course, it's not quite lunchtime yet, so not too many people here. I would like to make note of our too close for comfort matching shirts today. I need to say, I'm never up here this early in the morning. You know, I always see you making the videos up here and stuff like that. It's beautiful up here. Yeah, there's nobody back here. No. Anyway, I wanted to talk a little bit about our experience over in World Celebration today and kind of share some of our thoughts now that we've been thinking about it wandering through the park. I think that it is, first of all, wonderful to have this section of the park open and available to guests again. It's been so long and I'm so glad that it is back and that the space is being utilized in a way that provides shade and seating. I also love that there are tables and places to eat which, in my opinion, this park so desperately needs. We talk about that all the time. And now we have at least something else. I do think that it feels a little bit out of place right now, only because it's so far forward in the park and there are only so many booths right there. So it would be a long trek to that area in order to eat there. But when everything else opens, I think it's gonna be a whole different story. So I'm pleased, I can say that. So I guess my question becomes, does park capacity change now that that's, that space is now opened? That's a good question. And honestly, it's been my theory for a really long time that park capacity has not changed. Now, I can't know for sure. I don't think anyone can except for Disney themselves because they keep this information really close to their chest. But there are a lot of people who have talked about how it feels like the parks are more crowded than ever. I don't think that's the case, at least in terms of actual capacity. The numbers don't indicate that that's the case either in terms of revenue that the parks are bringing in. What I think is happening is that the parks have less space accessible to guests and therefore there's less places for those guests to be. And so the places that are available feel more crowded because, for example, an entire section of Epcot wasn't open. So that doesn't necessarily reduce the amount of capacity in the park, but it does reduce the amount of places where people can be. Well, no, and I think what's interesting, you actually made a really valid point, because so we have close enough experience to 2020. Mm -hmm. We came in 2019, yes. and it was packed. Mm -hmm. To the gills. I, have, we've, I, I feel like, personally, I don't know about you, Kat, 
but we've never seen it like that ever again since then. No. Uh, to include even New Year's Eve last year. You know, I could still walk comfortably in the parks. Yeah. I mean, I feel like there's more crowded food and wine fest Friday nights than it was on New Year's Eve. And we had, we don't, we didn't have that space before. Mm -hmm. And now we do. And yeah, I that's think, gonna be so nice. And I think a lot of that is because <laughs> Disney is managing capacity. And again, there are only so many places for people to be. Some of them are places that are accessible, but people just don't go back there. For example, over in Hollywood Studios in the Grand Avenue area near Muppets, people aren't back there because there's no reason to be back there. And so there's nothing to spread the crowd out. Same thing with the Imagination Pavilion, you know? Every attraction that has a five minute wait or less is not housing people that need to be somewhere else in the park. And so I think that that's what we're feeling. But no, I don't remember it ever being as crowded as it was Christmas, New Year's, 2019 into 2020. And I've put myself in some really undesirable situations. So it's not like I've just been completely avoiding it. Like there have been times when I myself or even we have come here during really busy times in an attempt to try and manage those crowds and it's never been like it was. But either way, I'm really happy that this is here. How do you feel about the space? Have you like thought about it anymore as we've been wandering through and what is your final take? I think it's I think it's uh, Magic Kingdom's hub grass equivalent. Mm, I actually think it's better. Oh, it's way better. A I'm lot just more saying shade. it's the equivalent. Yeah. Yeah, there's shade, there's places to sit. It, I mean, which makes sense why you don't have it at Magic Kingdom because those spaces are reserved for fireworks, maximum capacity, you know, standing room only. I mm -hmm. get it. But I mean, I don't see how you couldn't even just sit there for fireworks. You probably could. You probably have a great time. I think so. It um, really is the heart of the park, isn't it? I love it. I, it has now become the hub to me, mm -hmm. right off the bat. Um, I'm excited that like, now I'm not a Starbucks drinker, but like Starbucks is right there. So you grab your coffee, then you go sit down. But there's no reason why I can't bring my coffee from home. Absolutely. Or coffee from your hotel room. Absolutely. And just find an Adirondack chair because they're there mm -hmm. and sit down and relax. Yeah. You know, the families go running off. You don't have a mood to run off and you want to just relax. You can't. I still have a problem with the rust. That especially, we didn't even show it on camera. But there are uh, manhole covers that are Epcot stamped and they're beautiful. If you've ever been to Japan and know the manhole covers in Japan represent the cities and they're all customized and they're beautiful. Mm -hmm. That manhole cover reminds me of that, but it wasn't treated properly. No. It's just rusted out. And you know, it makes it feel like it's been what, like 500 years, you know, we keep joking since the walls have gone up here mm. in Epcot. And it honest to goodness makes it feel like they haven't done anything. It makes it feel like it's been abandoned for that whole time. Things haven't yep. been managed. And some of it hasn't been up this whole time either. So like, that's not an accurate statement, you know? Like the rusty architecture, the rusty bench looking things that we saw, that stuff is relatively new. So it's not as though it was installed all that time ago and just let go, but it seems like it was. That's how it looks. And this is day one. I can only imagine what it's gonna look like moving forward and I'm concerned about that. Here's my thoughts on that. Now that I'm thinking about it, I'm wondering if they just haven't finished. I'm wondering if the goal was to go live on Walt's birthday with his statue, with Luminous, no matter what the cost. Mm. And if that means there's rusty manhole covers and rusty metal fixtures that haven't been painted yet, then they're not. Now I will say, you open up the space and then you immediately close off areas due to construction and doing the updates, that's a problem. Like leave the walls up. I don't think that's what they're gonna do though. I think they're gonna let it slip. I don't I think, think they can. I think there's gonna be too much public backlash. I don't know. I know that there are some other people who've been talking about it because yesterday or two days ago when you're seeing this, there was conversation about this on some outlets and people were, again, as they always do, criticizing people for pointing this out. but. It's, it's not okay for it to be like this. And especially in a park like Epcot where it's so like clean and all of that, like it's very modern. I, I don't Silver. understand. Chrome. I don't understand. It's futuristic, you know what I mean? So. It's World Celebration, it's supposed to be the newest and greatest. Like it clearly shows in the architecture. Mm. You know what I mean? You have these like. I wonder, speaking, sorry not to, not to cut you off, but I wonder if the concept art has it looking brown and rust colored. And that's my problem though. It looks beautiful. I like the brown. It's gorgeous. But it's but literally it's rust. rust and it's transferable. And you know what else I think is gonna be a concern too? 
is, you know, especially some of the arches and everything, if that is actual like rust and it drips, it's not only gonna stain the ground, but it's gonna stain guest clothing, strollers, yeah. stuff like that too, so. But anyway, I feel like it's a real lot to think about and we're gonna continue to do that. Of course, we'd love to hear what you guys have to say. I also want to come back at night and we will take you on that little adventure too, so be sure to stay tuned for that. Of course, if you enjoyed hanging out with us today, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button and subscribe if you haven't already. Before we do that though, I have a question for you, Russ. Yep. Are you gonna buy any of that Festival of the Holidays merchandise? You've been talking about it nonstop. Maybe the corksicle? Because I feel like that's the most... No, I don't even know. Mm. It's just, it's really nice. I'm really saddened by the quality of that hoodie. And I mean, I'm obviously not going to wear the lounge fly, but uh, no, I guess not, really. It's too bad. It's too bad, but it is beautiful. I, I definitely encourage anyone who does relatively like it should pick it up. I think it's really nice. Of course, we want to know what you would pick up if you were here let us know we didn't see any other 2024 merch either which means by the way that it's only currently available in the resorts i've got lots to say about that we'll talk about that some other time though but for now like i said let us know your thoughts on world celebration and this new area let us know if you would hang out there let us know if you like that festival of the holidays merch we always love to hear what you have to say and we can't wait to hear everything you have to say about this new area that just opened up until then Thanks so much for hanging out with us. Thanks, everyone. We look forward to seeing you next time. Bye.